It's been a long time coming, but we're back. Yeah. I've dealt with a lot of mental health issues over the past couple of months. And still I am. I'm not going to get into that. Right at the moment. As you know, the New York Islanders missed the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs. Unfortunately, they came up 20 points short. Um, ended up with a 37, 35, and 10 record. Above NHL 500, but still. Not, compared to last year and the year before, terrible. Um, so we're going to look at the sets in all 82 games. And Barry Trotz, our coach, was fired. So now we're going to be down in the dumps for probably the next two years or so. Unless we get a good coach. I don't know. So to start off at the stats, Zach Parise, the only player on the Islanders to play all 82 games. For his age, he's, he's a real power player. And the, Brock Nelson with 37 goals. And then leads the Islanders in goals. Matt Bart with 37. Matt Barzell leads the... Matt Barzell leads the team in assists with 15. And Brock Nelson leads with points with 59. Then Barzell, Noah Dobson, Andrews Lee, Josh Bailey, J.G. Pajot, Zach Parisi, Anthony Beauvillier, Kyle Palmieri, Pellick, Wallstrom, Polak, Bellows, Mayfield, Kazikas, Clutterwick, Char, Ajo, Green, Martin, and Johnston. The goalies... Really quickly, Elisa Rukin played fit. Simeon Varlamov played 31 of the 82 games. Elisa Rukin played the other 52. Oh. Um. So Varlamov ended up being 10, 17, and 2. Soroka ended up being 26, 18, and 8. Varlamo with a 2.91 save percentage. Yeah, I'm very confused now. I'm not good with these stats, so I'm not even going to start. Um, going all the way back to the top. Uh, Ryan Pollock is a team in penalty minutes. Brock Nelson led... The team in power play goals with 11. Um, Zach Parise led the Islanders with, in shorthanded goals with 2. No Dobson. Uh, Kyle Palmieri led, led the team with 6 game-winning goals. So now we're going to go to the... Um, so the month of October, the Islanders played October 14th. In Carolina, they lost 63. They could have played better. And October 16th, they played in Sunrise, Florida, against the Panthers. They lost 5-1. to one. And they played a lot better in that game. They got a lot more shots on goal, but still, even worse score. October 19th, they played in Chicago, and they got their first one of the season 4-1. to one. Goals from, I somehow remember these, um, Beauvillier, Wallstrom, two goals, and Clutterbuck. And that game was on ESPN. Um, then October 21st, 3-2 overtime loss in Columbus. Um, October, then two straight shutouts for Elias Sorokin. October 23rd and 24th, a 3 nothing win in Arizona, and a 2 nothing win in Vegas. And then, and then a five-day break before... A 3-2 shootout loss in Nashville on October 30th. The end of October. Um, so, like, month of November. November, November 4th. 6-2 win in Montreal. Brock Nelson, four goals, including an empty netter. Then a two nothing, this, uh, November 6th, a 2 nothing win in Winnipeg. is another shutout for Sorokin. November 7th, St. Simeon Varlamo's first game. 5-2 loss in Minnesota. Then there come a lot of the losses. November 11th, 4 0 loss in New Jersey. November 15th, 4 1 loss in Tampa Bay. November 16th, 6 1 loss in Sunrise. 
happens. That one game is on ESPN Plus. Then November twentieth, obviously the first, the next five games are home games. The first five home games. November twentieth, a five-two loss to the Flames on opening night. November twenty-first, a three-nothing loss to the Leafs. November twenty-fourth, a four-one loss to the Rangers. Andy Andreoff did score his first NHL goal there. And November twenty-sixth, a one-nothing loss to the Penguins. Two games were postponed to another date. Eight. December was a way better month for us. December 2nd, a 2-1 overtime loss to the Sharks. December 4th, a 4-3 overtime loss in Detroit. December 5th, a 3-2 shootout loss to, to the Blackhawks. So, one point in three games. Three points in three games. And then, finally breaking the losing streak on, November, on December 7th, 5-3 win in Ottawa. Then... 4-3 loss to the Predators on December 9th. December 11th, a 4-2 win over the Devils, our first game win at home, first win at UBS Arena. December 14th, a 2-1 loss in Detroit. December 16th, a 3-1 win over the Bruins. That was Simeon Marlowe's first win of the season. December 19th, a 4-3 shootout loss to the Golden Knights. I was at that game. And then, obviously, a break due to COVID. And then December 30th, a 4-1 win over the Sabres. So... <clears throat> Moving on to the month of January, they played all but one game. They played ev about every home, every game in January at home, except for one. New Year's Day, January 1st, a 3-2 overtime win over the Oilers. That was the only overtime win, overtime goal, overtime game we won. No adoption, obviously. Then we had a, a very large break. January 13th, we came back, 3-2 win over the Devils. January 15th, a 2 nothing win over the Capitals. January 17th, a 4-1 win over the Flyers. They played the Flyers again the next day. Hey, January 18th in Philadelphia, won that 4-3 in a shootout. That game was on ESPN+. Plus. Then another doubleheader, January 21st. 4-0 win over the Coyotes. It's a Rokin shutout. And then January 22nd, 3-1 loss to the Leafs. Right around this time, Islanders legend Clark Gillies passed away. Hey, the January 22nd game I was at. January 25th, the 4-3 win over the Flyers. January 27th, the 3-2 loss to the Kings. That was on ESPN+. Plus. And then January 30th, a 4-3 loss to the Wild. So a pretty okay month for the Islanders in January. February was was not that good at all. <clears throat> Started off, off before, two games before the All-Star break. Two games before the All-Star break. February 1st, 4-1 win of the Senators. February 2nd, a 3-0 loss to the Kraken. That was the Seattle Kraken's first shutout in their history, of course. Um, February 9th, 6-3 win in Vancouver after the Ulster break on TNT. Then doubleheader February 11th, 3-1 loss in Edmonton. And then February, and then the next day, a 5-2 loss in Calgary. February 15th, a 6-3 loss in Buffalo. And then February 17th, a 4-1 win over the Bruins. I was at that game in suites, actually. And then February 20th, a 3-2 shootout loss to the Canadians. Back on on uh, back on the road to end up February February twenty second five two win over the in Seattle February twenty fourth a four three shootout loss in San Jose February twenty then a doubleheader February twenty sixth five two loss in Los Angeles and then a four nothing win in Anaheim the next day the month and then the month of March we played seventeen games eleven of those at home we did fairly good in the month of March. March 1st, 5-3 winning color, five three loss in Colorado, excuse me. Then we went on a six-game homestand. March 3rd, 4-3 loss to the Canucks. March 5th, 2-1 win over the Blues. March 7th, 5-4 loss to the Avalanche. March 10th, 6 nothing win over the Blue Jackets. The next day, March 11th, 5-2 win over the Jets. I was at that game. And then March 13th against the Ducks, a 4-3 win. And then two row games, March 15th, 4-3 shootout loss in Washington. March 17th, 2-1 win at the Garden. And then doubleheader, March 19th, 4-2 win over the Stars. Hat trick for Brock Nelson. Forgot to mention March 10th against the Blue Jackets. Andrews Lee scored a hat trick. Then March 20th, 2-1 loss in Philadelphia. That game was on TNT. Just, uh, just Also, the February 22nd game against the Kraken was on ESPN+. Plus. Two home games, February, March 22nd, 3 nothing win over the Senators. Sorokin shut out. No, Varlamov should have actually. And then February, and then March 24th, 5 2 win over the Red Wings. Doubleheader, March 26th, my birthday. 6 3 loss in Boston. March 27th, 4 1 loss to the Lightning. I was at that game. 
Then finish off the month on a good note. March 29th, 4-3 win in Columbus. Then March 31st, 5-2 win over the Blue Jackets. That game was on ESPN+. Plus. The final month, the month of April. We play most of the games in April on the road. Start off NA. On a five-game road trip. From April 1st, 3 nothing win at the Garden. April 3rd, 4-3 win over the, in New Jersey. That was on TNT. The last Islander game on national television. Mark, April 5th, 3-2 loss in Dallas. April 8th, a 2-1 win in Carolina. April 9th, a 6-1 loss in St. Louis. April 12th, we came back home. 5-4 shootout win over the Penguins. Then back on the road for three games. Mark, April 14th, 6-3 loss in Pittsburgh. The next day, a 3-0 win in Montreal. After we found that Mike Bossy, another Islanders legend, passed away. Very unfortunate. And April 17th, 4-2 loss in Toronto. We lost the game, and then we were officially eliminated from playoff contention. But we still kept playing. Two home games. April 19th, 3-2 overtime loss to the Panthers. April 21st, 6-3 loss to the Rangers. An away game, February 20th, March, April 23rd. 5-3 win and 5-3 loss in Buffalo. And then April 24th, 5-2 loss to the Hurricanes. I was at that game. Finishing off the season with one more road game, 4-1 win in Washington on April 26th. And then doubleheader April 28th, a 5-1 win over the Capitals. And April 29th, a 6-4 loss to the Lightning. So the Islanders end their season 30 with 37 wins, 35 losses, 10 overtime losses. I kept talking about, uh, oh, how we're going to be back next year better than ever, but Barry Trotz was just fired, so don't know about that now, but I guess we'll have to see. Um, I don't know when our NASCAR video is coming, maybe this week, maybe three weeks from now, I don't even know. I'm just trying to get to the school year at least for right now, trying, trying to get rid of the mental health issues. Not really helping at all, though. Still, thank you to everybody to that is watching this video. Um, that is your New York Islanders 2021-2022 season review. Wish we could have been in the playoffs, but whatever. The Rangers are in the playoffs, but they're but they ain't doing so well either. So, I guess it's a win for us. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll next. Uh, hockey video will be going over the 2022-23 schedule for the Islanders when it when it, it will eventually be released. So this is it for me. This is Ross Belkin signing off. Peace out.